you guys are looking great. Thank uh, you. Thank you. We are in mountains, so we kind of a little shabby. <laughs> I love it. I love the hair. I, lo- I love the. I love the crazy hair. It's cool. Yeah, it's like everything is going. Everything is going here. Wow. Well, like, no. <laughs> How how long will you be yeah. up there for until the end of quarantine? You know that's a t- tough question because uh, you know that they are extending the lockdown every 15 days, mm-hmm. and also have a little one with us. So we don't want to take a risk of uh, venturing into the you know the urban jungle and be completely unsure about her movement. So it's going to be as long as possible, as long as we feel secure of uh, getting out of here. That's Till awesome. then, no barber. <laughs> no, no hair stylist, nothing. <laughs> All natural. <laughs> All natural. <laughs> the first question everyone has, I think, is: Is there a season two of Family Man coming? Yes, uh, it's uh, it's in the editing phase because of the lockdown. Naturally, everything is gone on slow mode. But uh, you know, they they have been editing and they've been you know at it from their. You know, respective homes, but yes, it's uh, the post production is on. Once the lockdown is lifted, everything is easy. Everything calms down. Hopefully, then they'll start getting out, getting into the studios for the post production work. That will be the main work, main job. And after that, you know, the it's the Amazon's decision whether to come this year or or go in the next year, in the beginning of next year. I hope it comes this year, man. Yeah. I really, really hope it comes this year. <laughs> I'm so I'm so anxious for it. It seems like you do a lot of preparation for the roles that you take because they, they seem very lived in and detailed when you come back to do a character like you're doing in family man is it easier or do you have to do the prep all over again it's a it's a very good question actually i mean what happens especially in a in a situation that where we work in there are too many projects you know we are supposed to do if we are getting good job we take it up and we are all invested into it and then you know, you you have to come back to the family man mode, which is quite difficult. So what what I do that, you know, I go through the series, the first season, try to understand how I actually started doing the preparation. What were the basic points, and what were the basic elements that I was focusing on? Yes, it was hard. It was very hard uh, to go back to it. I'm very sure that you know the the struggle that I have gone through in going back to uh, family man mode, the struggle of each and every actor, uh, be it anybody from Breaking Bad or Games of Thrones for that matter or Sacred Games from India, you know, all of them go through the same struggle of getting to the character all over again, visiting the character all over again and getting the essence of it yeah. as you got it in the first time. First time. It's, a, it's quite a struggle. It's quite a struggle. Uh, and then the best part, the, what I have realized while preparing for, for the second season, get the basic of the protagonist. And after that, you know, you have to understand that the story has progressed. So the, the character has has kept on, it, it kept on changing, you know, it, it kept on changing because of the situations which he was facing in his life. So you don't need to be the same person because the second season is going to be very intense and is going to be uh, bigger yeah. and hopefully better. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting, me, you're, getting me, you're getting me amped up for season two. Is there anything that your dad taught you as a young farmer that you still use in your life today? Simplicity, JB. You know, being a farmer's son, what it does, that uh, it doesn't let your head bloat it up, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> the farmers, uh, by the sheer nature of the job, they are so rooted because of the, the place that uh, they, are, they are working in, they are born and brought up in, or in the manner they are struggling with day-to-day life. You, you never tend to lose your mind, never lo- tend to lose your balance, uh, be it success or failure, recognition, no recognition. You know that, you know, everything is just part of life. You just take it easy, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's simplicity, yeah. I'm sure you've been asked about this a lot, but you applied for that Delhi Dramatic School and, and you were rejected several times. And I'm sure that you've had many conversations yeah. about this, but I like we're both curious. After that... Uh, third time of being rejected it was it was obviously hard like how did you keep from giving up like was there something that kept you going on a, on a humorous note i must tell you the first time first time you feel that you know you uh, the earth has actually you know ripped apart for you yeah. and you've gone inside you really feel that you know this is the end this is the end i mean there is no way you're going to go anywhere from here because you know that's that is where all, all the illusion about yourself, all the ideas about yourself, 
of being this actor or that actor and you know having this ability that ability everything is just you know ripped apart thrashed down and the second time you you go with a lot of preparation okay and then again you are uh, you are knocked down then you start actually you know looking inward uh, <laughs> rather than feeling angry you you start uh, uh, looking inward and start you know it makes you think that there must be something wrong with the preparation that you're doing must be wrong with you are you really an actor think about it third time on a very humorous note but that's the reality it becomes a habit rejection becomes a habit of <laughs> habit of habit. and you know it has it has really helped me it it helped me in latter part of my life when i shifted to mumbai and uh, in mumbai what happens that you know you are as good as anybody who is standing in the line for the for the part okay yeah so no matter how many years that you have given to the theater no matter no matter how many plays you have done no matter how uh, respected you were in that theater scene that you are coming from the film industry uh, doesn't treat anybody you know in a very exclusive or special way it always looks at everyone as per their demand as per their requirement that kind of sobered me up and in initial days were quite tough in mumbai the rejection by national scope drama somewhere it has uh, it gave me a lot of patience that there is something good there is something good about me i'll have to wait till they see it so what was it like to yeah. go from being rejected to being offered a teaching position at the school <laughs> <laughs> you know everything yeah <laughs> okay. no, that was the biggest achievement for me more than all the awards and the accolades and the um, appreciation that i got from cinema the biggest achievement for me is when you know i'm uh, i was recognized and respected by not only credible most credible uh, institute in asia and when they invited me you know just to come and you know share share my experiences with the students i i i think it, i think it's quite fascinating how you keep it humble given like your stature you know i mean because you're so highly respected in the acting community as well, especially now it's surprising to me that after your fourth audition and they offered you a teaching position you were like peace out and just bounced <laughs> like it's interesting to me that like you were you were honored as opposed to being like i don't need you look <laughs> you know no 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 this uh, is it's a very credible institute i keep telling all the uh, all the actors who come for any kind of suggestions or advice to me and when they mention that they want to go to new york film academy or go to la to learn you know acting i always tell them you know save save your dad's money man i mean there is national school drama there is a uh, film institute of uh, pune which are as good you know and they will be far more cheaper and affordable for for your parents yeah. so it's best that you give it a try uh, and you know and also you'll be learning acting in in, in indian languages you know if i if i go and learn you uh, acting in english uh, in new york film academy it is it is not going to do any anything to me uh, because you know new york's uh, america's reality is completely different from ours true you know so it's uh, it's, it's very important to to be here and observe uh, the behavior human behavior human complexities human relationship it's interesting that you're saying that taking acting classes is different in india than it would be in new york because of the experiences yeah. but like not speaking hindi and watching you it was very obvious to me of how talented you are like because i'm watching all these different actors and whatnot so despite that there's something universal about the way you're performing that still has like an appeal for us yeah. who don't speak it, any hindi yeah jb so what happens that uh, the emotions are the same okay the emotions of any any situations emotions of uh, uh, the conflicts in a relationship the human conflict is always the same but uh, the way of responding to it way of expressing it is completely different okay so if i'm learning my response and expression from uh, from say new york film academy i mean it's it's a fantastic academy you know it's an amazing academy there is there's no two ways about it all i'm saying response to that situation and respond or uh, uh, or that human um, expression uh, we express it differently right that's why 
you know i mean the, the great actors like de niro's and basies and you know pacino's you look at them you don't copy them you just try to analyze their performance analyze the the up, approach not exactly the expression because that was expressions will look very false if i try to copy it here in india right mm-hmm. Okay, because our responses to any situations are completely different. Is there anything that you learned in drama school that you're like, wow, that was really important? Because like, when I went to drama school, what they said was, there's a lot of stuff we're going to teach you right now. You're not going to understand all of it, but in a few years time, the pennies are going to drop and you're going to get it. And I was like, oh, so did, did that happen for you at all? I mean, as JB told you that, you know, I wanted to get into drama school. I couldn't, but well, I've done extensive theater outside, done hundreds of workshops by all the greats. One thing I have learned, it was the first time when I read uh, Stanislavski, I couldn't understand anything, you know, uh, I couldn't get at anything. And then I realized that Stanislavski was a great actor from Russia. So he's written the book after having gone through all that experiences in acting in life. Right. So to get him and to understand him, I had to keep practice practicing keep acting keep doing my job keep making mistakes keep learning then only in the end i'll understand what exactly he was mentioning it when he was talking about the emotional memory mm. that chapter of emotional memory you can't understand till you really do it till till you really go through the experience on stage as an actor or as a person in life so after a few years when i started reading the same book I understood whole of it. So you have to understand that the books in the end they have no use. The acting is all about being, acting is all about doing it. Acting is not only about thinking and reading about it. They are very uh, important part of it, but they are not the only part of it. Right. They're just the beginning. Right. The, the the rest of it is only about doing it and being. You had long periods between projects sometimes over a year and i'm always curious like what someone like yourself is doing in that interim between th- that long interim between projects it's a tough time for an actor if you are not getting good job or not great roles are being written and the the roles which are being offered to you is not something which are part of your dream so you don't don't you know uh, take it uh, so what do you do uh, you spend a lot of time uh, reading watching and living living is very important living by living means not only making tea for yourself or you know working in, in inside your house but also you start mingling with the people visit your old friends visit your village go on the road you know try to be try to try to just get out be with people because this is this is where your references are be like them don't be an observer mingle with them you know behave like them don't behave like a, an actor behave like a like a person that you are you know be genuine and truthful to the to to the people that you are meeting and then you understand you 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 keep you know feeding keep loading it in your hard drive you know <laughs> and you know it's very important for an actor very very important actors can be truthful Yeah. to the situation that they are in the actors can be truthful to the people that they are meeting and that way they learn a lot and they, it really helps a lot i mean it helped me quite a lot you know, whenever i try to perform a new character the the references they keep coming there are so much there are so much coming from a village till here the journey has been very long so naturally my experiences with the people have been vast you know so references come to you naturally you don't have to really force yourself when when you're talking about emotional memory so speaking of roles because you mentioned like sometimes roles would come your way that weren't necessarily roles that you were interested in um people producers or or studios used to drop off cash at your door and say you have to take <laughs> yeah. this role and then you would you would sometimes give back that cash because you didn't want that role was there ever an instance where you really needed that money but you still gave back the cash because you didn't want that role and how did you find the strength to oh, do that ah uh, it was very hard it was very hard to return that can that amount of money as a signing amount you know those days there used to be no contracts the kind of contracts that we talk about that you know it goes to your lawyer and you know that lawyer lawyer that lawyer the industry was completely disorganized you know as a signing amount most of the time people used to come in suitcases or briefcases you know just give you the signing amount 
the 20% or 25% whatever and you see that those bundle of notes and uh, <laughs> you know a person who who is living on rent yeah. you know <laughs> you know who is uh, who is actually desperate to have his own you know small apartment in in a in a in a city like mumbai returning it was very hard as my mother calls me that she says that i'm a very very stubborn person from from my childhood so that is stubbornness you know about my decision somewhere help me you know in just pushing it away pushing it away i somehow somehow convinced that you know things will change things will change you just have to be patient yeah Wow. I don't know if I even have that strength. That was that's amazing. Like that oh, wow. Generally in your career, have has it been more of you've been seeking out the roles that that you've eventually gotten or like they've just come to you because you've done such a wide variety. Yeah. So initially what happens that you are you are you are waiting for the right role to happen because you are in no position to create roles. Okay? Uh, you are in no position to say that you know i will work with this director or i will not work with this director you know so initially i have uh, my patience somewhere paid off you know 6 months of patience or 8 months or some some time one year of patience it used to pay off with some good film or by you know the bad decisions so however you want you may call it now since few years i have realized after gangs of wasipur i have realized that you know i have to i have to uh, look for directors because now uh new directors new scripts new brilliant scripts are there and the situations in the industry uh, com- completely changed now the people are behaving much more professionally so i should look for the directors and help them make the they make those films and my entire approach changed after that so all the all the great films that i have done all the performances that i'm very very proud of happen in this uh, uh say you know 7 6 7 years since since the time i started looking for those directors looking for those scripts calling those directors whenever i see a short film i saw a short film of a director and then i approached him i said you know let's do a film together and then we made a film what happened that in this 6 7 years that i changed my approach i realized the position that i was in and i used to used it to my advantage till now i have a routine that every day i call a director telling him that you know if there is anything brilliant please get it to me and this is this is how you know things started changing for me i appreciate your uh ability to adapt but it seems like from the very beginning your roles have always been interesting we looked at your your what was the name of the first movie like your very first film where you're in a military outfit uh with Nasiruddin Shah and Ampuri oh, 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 oh god <laughs> that one minute role yeah, yeah. yeah but even that like it was like <laughs> it's a un- it was like a unique story like compared to a lot of yeah. what you'll find because like we grew yeah. up thinking bollywood is one thing i had no idea that movie existed so i've done a film with shekhar kapoor that was that was uh, technically that was my first film when i was doing theater i was chosen to chosen to play a very important role in that film bandit queen it got you know it was going through a lot of uh, sensor trouble and meanwhile in mumbai i was struggling for roles so i went to this acclaimed director govin nalani ji and he said that you know i don't have any role left i have one role which is you know hardly one minute role so if you are interested you can take it i would say don't take it i said i don't have anything to do anything better to do in this city please give me this role at least i'll be facing those legends you know uh, yeah. in, in a scene i'll be working with them that's all that's all that's how it all happened well for us it's like really neat because i i mean obviously it's different for you and your experiences but for us it's like seeing all these legends in the room together even though your role is small it's like it's still so neat to see all of you guys together acting together thank you <laughs> yeah was there was there anything that you that you picked up uh when you were on set with Nasiruddin Shah and Om Puri at that time you know what i picked up a very unique thing uh Mr Nasiruddin Shah and Mr Om Puri those were my inspiration those were the those were the actors who were teaching teaching uh, me uh, through their performances i was looking at their performances very closely what i learned was very unique that you know they do, they've never taken their actor status very seriously uh, that was so amazing they were always laughing giggling 
you know cracking jokes on fellow actors and talking to them uh, one on one that was a first education i i realized that you know you don't need to you just you just an, you are an actor like somebody who's working in a grocery shop you are like actor like an engineer or a interior designer so what you know so that simplicity you know somewhere i made me feel that it's a or humility is very very important as an actor very important it's interesting you're saying that because um you've done a few interviews with reddiff.com and one of them it, according to Hansel Meta uh, you used to live your characters day and night like Daniel Day Lewis but now you keep, yeah. he, he says he says now you keep it more internalized and i'm yeah, just yeah. i'm curious what helped you to make that switch from being like living living a day and night like Daniel Day Lewis to what you're doing now yeah. And do you find your interactions are different with colleagues on set as a result? You know, I I realized long back that you know if I'm going to uh, approach all my characters like uh, like that, I'll wear off. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it started taking so much from me. It started uh, making me a little a uh, lot of uh, anxiety, a mm -hmm. lot of moodiness. You know, the moodiness was increasing day by day, short temperedness. I you know somewhere I started running away from the crowd the gathering I realized that no it's it's uh, if I have to work for a very long time I have to change my approach I took a lot lot of time because you know this is where in that approach you were trained in you you trained yourself in you worked on it and then you had to leave everything because yeah. a a friend of mine who is also uh, a psychiatrist he said you know Manoj uh, this is uh, and all the i was getting nightmares all uh, every second night you used to be a sleepless night for me and then he said that you know it's, it's not the right way to do it i think you sh you should think about it i don't know anything about acting you know i don't know anything about being an actor all i would say if you can please change your approach because this is not doing any good to you and that set me thinking uh, now i'm much more happier i'm into meditation I'm into a uh, lot of uh, spiritual activities, which makes my mind very light, and it helps me to come out of the character, you know, immediately. When you were first starting uh, in Bollywood in the '90s, Bollywood wasn't sure what to do with you, and they wanted to just cast you in the villain role, and you were oh, yes. and, and you were steering clear of that. But after seeing your snippet in, because uh, we didn't watch the whole film, but we watched a snippet of AKS or Axe, Axe, yeah, Axe, and it made me wonder. If any part of you is afraid to do roles like that because of how much you immerse yourself in each thing you do, do you do you are you apprehensive about villain roles because of how intense it can, the process of developing the character can be? To put it very simply, those days villains were very different. You know, they were they were there to do bad to the protagonist, <laughs> okay. and in the end, they would in the end they, they used to get thrashed very badly. Okay. 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 <laughs> That's that that was that was their role, you know. So the typical commercial formula films they used to make. Right. And I had a and I somehow, you know, I was not ready for it. I I was looking at my myself in a different way. My idea about my actor was completely different from the people who were making those films. Mm -hmm. So when they used to look at me, naturally I was not a, a typical conventional looking guy who could fit into do, doing those uh, Heroes roles, or they straight away they used to, you know, they they want they used to fit me into a villain's henchman or a or a villain or a villain's second henchman, you know. So I was not ready for it. I I wanted to do something something else with myself, with all the experience that I that I've had in theatre. So yeah, I mean that's why you know to answer your first question, that's why the wait used to be very very long. Regarding uh, arcs. If Warner Brothers were to ever do an Indian Joker, or if there was ever like a, a Batman in India, would you ever consider playing Joker if it was offered to you? Because it's like that's that's, know, what, uh, that's what I was, I was thinking about when I was watching. I'm like, oh my god, it's like the Joker. <laughs> yeah, you know. So uh, thank you very much for really uh, saying it because those days, around uh, you know 18, 19 years back when I've done it, few of the people. Uh, We've seen um, Heath Ledger's Joker. After that, they have messaged to me. You know, they said that you, you, you did it, Manoj. You did it much before everybody. <laughs> it will be interesting to play Joker. You know, my take on Joker will be completely different. Uh, if it happens in Hindi, it will be all the more better because you know Hindi is the language that I'm comfortable, much more comfortable uh, than English. 
but uh, if if it happen in, in hindi uh, definitely i'll have something something new uh, or some different inter- interpretation to it when you've been working on set uh, has there ever been a time when you've been given direction and you've just gone no i, d- I don't <laughs> agree with that and and like if that's happened how did you deal with it <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you an actor by any chance? Yeah. We 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 both we both we yeah, both do we actors. Both. Yeah. You both are. Yeah. Okay. That's a very actor's question. Yeah. So it happens, you know, in every film it happens uh, that there is a point where, you know, um, I as an actor and the director we don't agree. But I person I somewhere I'm very very clear that I'm part of director's vision. I'm very clear about it. this film is happening and this role is there because of the director's vision and his passion to make this film right so i cannot afford to have a very serious conflict with we can't we can't work in conflict we we can work in an atmosphere where there is a lot of give and take exchange so i make i always make my you know directors i take them in the corner we sit down and we thrash it out it's like if i convince you i convince you, uh, then let me do it or if you convince me i'll do it the way you want to want me to do it but sometimes what happens the director's requirements are far away from the uh, characterization of yours then you have to find the middle ground or sometimes what i do that i i, uh, I just kind of we we come to a conclusion of uh, doing two three takes where you know i do it the way he wants me to do it I do it the way I want to do it and invariably when the director sees it in the edit he kept my version <laughs> because definitely you know at that point of time he could not see it because he has so many things to handle right he couldn't see where I was coming from when it's but he, when he sees it on the edit you know he understands uh, my version better because we watched we watched a trailer i forget which movie it was it was one of your earlier ones and it made me think of that because a lot of the other actors i was like wow they're going really big and then i saw your bit and i was like okay that's big but i feel like that's that's manoj big you know oh you were playing a cop <laughs> you, you you played a cop in it and you were oh god what was the name of that movie i was like it began with an s h shul 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 yes shul means yeah. thorn shul means thorn yeah 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 And so, oh yeah. So yeah. what she was saying is that in that trailer, like there was a lot of over dramatic acting, but you still had a right. grounded sense about you, even amongst all the right. dramatic acting. Yeah. So I was kind of like, right. oh, right. There, right. there must have been a moment where you were like, yeah, but um, let me just <laughs> let me just do my thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That 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 film was very difficult, and it also gained quite a cult status here on on a policeman's journey, a policeman who is. Uh, who's actually going by the rule book cop you know and and suddenly he sees that he's the only one who's following the book yeah. and nobody else in his in his um, police station or outside anybody is you know trying to understand i'm coming from so when i'm doing something by the law it is questioned not only by the by the criminals by the by by the politicians by but also by you know it is questioned by my family too you know so all of them call me stubborn all of them say that i am the one who is getting you know unnecessarily angry angry about uh, things but other these are the people who taught me about all of these things mm-hmm. you know i have learned in police and in the school i have learned moral science in the school in the police school i have learned about constitution but here they don't want me to work uh, according to the constitution right. and i had become the bad so you know the the conflict was that and how his life starts scattering plus stumbling down and uh, and in the end he goes mad completely 25 years in this business that's longer than a, a large portion of the people watching this video have been alive <laughs> and now in all those years what have you found as the number one most thankless job most underappreciated job on set yeah i will tell you um there are too many actually thankless jobs there on the set in our country uh, we see like men okay you know i i see those guys working in especially in our industry uh they pick up lights they they reach much before much much before the call time of any, uh, any other actor or or the director or the producer mm-hmm. or the you know 
chief of the production production designer they they reach their first all the the main workers and we don't even look at them we don't most of the time we don't even know their names yeah okay yeah they they keep on they are the they are the people who are working in the most toughest situation if you want to shoot in a desert your lights will be there it will be all set up you know and you reach there in your you go you go for your makeup you take off your makeup you go to your room you know but you don't think about those guys who have reached 2 hours before you 3 hours before you they had very less sleep and i know i still they managed to finish your shoot and shoot on schedule i think well, all the actors all the people or all the head of departments should always make it sure that they say hi to those guys first yeah. and this is what i do okay i try to i try to remember their names yeah uh, i try to talk talk to them humor them you know laugh with them mm-hmm. sometimes i just go to them and uh, when they are eating not because i'm doing any favor it's just my my way of recognizing the hard work uh, yeah. or or their sacrifice and how it's it, it's too much work for that that kind of money it's too much work for them yeah supposedly your wife loves 80% of your films <laughs> what's the conversation like with the other 20% <laughs> how, how do you feel when you find okay. out it's something she doesn't like <laughs> she's a brutal brutal critic of mine you know okay and i keep telling all the critic friends of my reviewers here in, in india that you can be as brutal as my wife so you know i don't mind your criticism or criticism about anything bad you write about me because they are far more milder than what i get to hear at home <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah she is, she is and that's that's the way i want her to be you know she she just you know puts me puts me straight you know whenever she thinks that you know i'm going a little diverting away from my original personality or from my original approach she just kind of stops me there she, you know listen man i mean this is where you are going wrong just you know just remember who you are uh just now just before coming to for for skype i was uh, i was the uh reading out a poem that i have written You know, and she said it's a trash. Uh, please look through. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so wow. Oh man, that would oh that would, that would really hurt. Oh, that would that would crush me. <laughs> you can't take that brutal no. honesty. Yeah, maybe I need that in my life. I don't know. Mm. Um, yeah, it's trash. I mean, just you know, you kind of improve on it. Don't don't uh, you know recite it, or record it, and put it on on Twitter or Instagram anywhere. Please improve on it. You know. Uh, so, but and you know, she said one thing fantastic. She said, you know, you you have a name, so anything that you read, people will say, wow, wow, wow. But you have to really work on it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's working. True. Wow. We watched Oligar. And um one thing I realized was that you and Rajkumar Rao like you're the faces of the movie. And so if anything were to if there was any backlash, you guys would be the first to receive backlash for that film. Were you were you at all hesitant or nervous to embrace that role? Jimmy, I uh, but the one time I'm fascinated with the script, once I make up my mind to do do any script, I fight for it. You know, I become I choose to become the face of it. Uh, I choose to they I I am ready to take any kind of a backlash. I was convinced about the film. We made that film in the time when being gay was criminal in our country, illegal, okay? And we knew what we were making, we knew uh what we are going to face and we faced it. We faced it. We took it on our chin, you know. There is once once you put in your heart and soul into a character in a film this is part of your conviction you can't go back on it so much so that even our p- promos could not be shown on satellite tvs because the promos were given a certificate and on satellite tv you can't show uh, anything which has a certificate the promos were not shown so what has happened that all the news channels here they took it upon themselves to invite us to their studios and you know have a chit chat or conversation and and sometimes we used to stand on the crossroads of mumbai and delhi with the placard of oligar you know just to make a statement you know so yes aligar has uh, taught a lot taught a lot and it also kind of 
uh, instigated, encouraged a huge debate on LGBTQ's rights here in India. It became quite a force uh, in the debate. And so that I'm so proud of it. Now, you know, LGBTQs have their rights back. Now everything is sorted out. It is far, as compared to the last time, as compared to the time we made Aligarh, this is a far better situation here. Was there ever any trouble while shooting the movie? Like, um, like Padmavat, for instance, when they were making that, not that it's a, a comparable at all, but like when they were making Padmavat, they kept get the set kept getting raided. Did you guys experience anything weird while you were making Aligarh? No, no, we, we, no, we were, we were keeping the, the story as a, you know, a secret. <laughs> yeah. You know, always telling the, always telling the authorities or the local people all the wrong stories about the film. <laughs> <laughs> and so, if you remember the character, I was in my beard. Yeah. So you know, nobody could guess that in in a beard somebody is playing a, playing a gay character. So you know, <laughs> yeah. it was quite a journey shooting the shooting for that film because most of the time, you know, when you're shooting in a small town. All the people want to meet you, all the uh, people who are in authority or the powerful people, you know, are inviting you to their places for lunches, for dinners. You're going there in your beard, you know, you're, you're wearing all your cool track pants and jackets, you know, so you, from no angle, uh, they come to know about the real story or the character that you're playing. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed, you know, hiding the story, uh, original story of Aligarh from them. And still playing it, yeah. you know, when you go on the set. You mentioned earlier that now you're able to uh, offload a role that you've just done mm -hmm. a lot more easily. But there was a time when you yeah. couldn't and it sort of stayed with you and sort of haunted you a little bit. Whenever you were feeling haunted by a role that you were supposed to let go of, was it always just the last role? Or was there ever a moment where, you're, where you were sort of feeling different things that you've studied, different roles that you've studied where you're sort of haunted by multiple characters that you've learned and, and developed? You know, you know what happens, JB, that no matter how, how much I learned uh, not to take the roles to my uh, to home or, or shrug it off uh, after after the shooting is over, that I feel that there is always a dent that every character makes to your to your mental state. Always, it always leaves some part of it with you because uh, that is why being an actor is such a difficult job in this entire world. You are playing. A flesh and blood character, you know, you are giving emotion to it. You are living the conflict of the character. It can't be so easy that you are actually completely out of it. You are not. But yes, most of you get distracted by the new role and you get busy with it. You know, so you you forget about it. But as far as the characters portions, some portions remaining with you, it is always there. Sometimes what happens that I am running on my treadmill. And suddenly I'm thinking about my scene, uh, which I have done 12 years back for some film. And I, at times I start talking, you know, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Why did I do it? Oh, I should have done it this way, you know. So I start mumbling these things. People who are running, you know, on the treadmill next to me, they just look at me and I, what the hell is wrong with this guy? <laughs> Is he all right? <laughs> so, and that happens uh, when I was doing Gali Gulia recently for Dipesh and the guy, uh, the director from LA. I was quite invested into the character. I, I realized that you can't, I could not pull off that role without really getting into it. Once I was, uh, walk, you know, going from one room to another, going to the kitchen from my room to the kitchen from my room, and uh, my wife was crossing me, and. As she crossed me, she suddenly turned and said, uh, What happened? And I looked at her. I said, What happened? She said, No, you said something. I said, I don't remember saying anything, you know. She said, You know, you're losing your mind. What, what is this role that you're playing? You're losing your mind. You're talking to yourself most of the time. So, you know, those kind of things happen. Uh, I think that's part of uh, being an actor. If you're not invested in it, if you're not working hard on it, uh, you can't get it. It's, uh, it's part and parcel of the job. No matter how lightly I take now those characters, but without really thinking about it, without really preparing for it, you can't get anywhere. You know, you can't get, you rather, rather I'll be doing injustice to it. You've done a wide variety of roles. Is there any role that you would like to do that you haven't had a chance to do yet? Oh, yes. 
I wish, I wish, uh, you know, God will turn me 25 again and I could play Hamlet. Okay. You, you still, you maintain your age really well though. Because we were watching Oligar and we're like, we know he's not that old, but he, <laughs> he's doing it really well though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, because I, I feel like anytime you have to do a character that's older, that's so much harder because you don't have that life experience to get you there. It's kind of easier to do someone younger because you have all your history to draw on. But you were really convincing mm. as a 64 year old Thank man because you. you kind of got the energy and, and the mannerisms and everything right. really down. So I was watching your interview with Anupama Chopra and she remarked on how she loved your response to nepotism. It made me wonder if your daughter ever expressed interest in acting, how you would navigate those waters, if you'd let her mm. follow in her parents' footsteps. I would start with one sentence that we should not be, you know, separating people or the children coming from a film family. It's not their fault, first of all, you right. know? Right. The debate is not whether they should get access or roles that easily or not. But they will, you know, my daughter will have an easy access to all the directors because they will know her. They will know her that, you know, she is the daughter of Manoj Bajpayee. But what we do uh, as parents, that we keep telling her that uh, she has to do it all, all on her own. Mm -hmm. Never let her feel that anything that we earn uh, through our hard work belongs to her. You know, we keep telling her, she's nine years old and one day she said that uh, she was telling a friend of mine that, you know, we just bought this this, this vehicle, okay, this car, I, I just, and that's my, that's my car and immediately I, you know, my, my wife said, no, that's not your car, that's not your car, that's your dad's car. So, you know, what happens is that we have to keep telling them, keep making them realize that being born in this family, may not be in her control but uh, she doesn't have any control or power over the belongings that we have it is not going to be easy for her getting access to the directors is a is a natural course natural thing but getting a role naturally because you are a daughter of Manoj Bajpi I don't think it's going to happen you'll have to work very hard you'll have to do theater you'll have to go to legitimate uh, theatre Institute. If you really want to do acting, if you want to do singing, you'll have to take the same route. If you want to become an engineer, you'll have to go, go through the same route. It's as simple as that. My problem is somewhere else. My pro problem is that uh, the people coming from outside, I know it's very difficult to consume all of them, but the people who are talented, really talented, all of us who are who are established, all of us who have spent a lot of time in this industry, we should, you know, individually make sure that whenever we see that talent, we push them. You know, we push them. We and make, try to make their journey journey shorter. Yeah. You know, it's 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 very very important. You can't just ignore a talent when you see them. This is on a personal level. I do. You know, whether I become successful in doing that or not, but I at least try. I try to, you know, call up a few directors or the casting directors. That this is this is uh, this is the boy or this is the girl who was in who, who were in my class. I think you two should take their numbers. They are very good. If they are, uh, you know, if I'm recommending these two students, the, the casting directors are taking their names very seriously and immediately, to, you know, try to put them on priority in, in audition. Okay, we should be very responsible in cutting short the journey of the talented people whenever we see them. Mm -hmm. And that's how we can help. I have one last question. Will we ever see a project with Manoj, Nawaz, Jimmy, Nasiruddin, and Vicky Koshal all together? Maybe directed by Anurag. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe Five Angry maybe Men. Directed by Anurag. <laughs> yeah. Five Angry Men. You know, uh, <laughs> it's called, I mean, it will be, it was such a learning process for me, you know, facing, working with these, uh, these fantastic actors. But you know, you know, if you look at it, uh, uh, Scorsese could only pull it off once yeah. <laughs> with Irishman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what a film. I've seen it twice. I know some, some people, some people, you know, always wonder how I could see the, the, that film twice because it's so long. Actors should see that film uh, and really take it as a, as a lesson in yeah. acting. I mean, 
when i was looking at de niro and pacino and pesci and all of these are great actors and i was wondering where this energy and passion coming from at the age uh, of 76 77 where you know and they in few of the sequences de niro and pacino and pesci have done outdone themselves mm-hmm. you know that's my goal you know when that you know that passion should be alive to improve as an actor as a professional till that age you know that's the that's the real struggle thank you so much for doing this really really appreciate it manoj so so so, so much and uh, and so does our audience you guys thanks so much for hanging out with us uh make sure to follow chair kirk on the social media as well as well as myself and watch manoj's movies as much as possible over and over thank and over thank you again. thank thanks both of you thank you peace out